remember your first month of running? It felt like magic, didn't it? You put on your shoes, you stepped out the door, and you felt... fast. Every single run was better than the last. You were losing weight, you were breathing easier, you were crushing your personal best without even trying. You looked in the mirror and thought, wow, I'm a natural. Why didn't I start this sooner? This is easy. And then, usually right around week six, the party ended. Suddenly, the exact same pace you ran last week feels impossible. Your legs feel heavy like concrete. Your breathing is shallow and hard. You are trying harder than ever, but you are actually going slower. And the voice in your head, the one that was cheering for you two weeks ago, starts whispering, Maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm not built for this. Maybe I reached my limit and I should just quit. If this is you right now, I need you to listen to me very carefully. Stop. Don't quit. You are not broken. You are not getting worse. You are actually experiencing a very specific, necessary biological event. The magic you felt at the start? That was a trick, a free sample. And now the free sample is over and the real work begins. The promise. In this video, I am going to explain exactly why you hit this wall. I will teach you the difference between your body's software and its hardware, and why your brain is currently writing checks your legs can't cash. And most importantly, I will give you the rule of thirds, a simple mental trick that elite athletes use to keep going when they feel terrible. Part one, the free trial, the software update. To understand why you are struggling now, we have to look at why it was so easy in the beginning. When you started running, your body did something amazing. It gave you a free trial of athleticism. Think of your body like a computer. You have the hardware, your muscles, bones, tendons, heart, and the software, your brain and nervous system. In the first four weeks, your body ran a massive software update. Your brain learned how to move your legs efficiently. It learned balance, it learned rhythm, it learned which muscles to fire and which to relax. This made you faster instantly. But here is the catch. Your hardware, your muscles and bones, didn't actually change much. You got faster because you got smarter, not stronger. It was free speed. But like any free trial on Netflix or Spotify, eventually it expires. By week six, the software update is finished. Your brain has optimized everything it can. But your legs, your legs are still running on the old hardware. That disconnect, a fast brain trying to drive a slow body, is exactly why you feel like you are dragging concrete blocks. Your brain says go, but your muscles scream, we aren't ready yet. Part two, the construction zone, the hardware problem. This is why you hit the wall. Now that the software is fixed, your body has to start upgrading the hardware. It has to build bigger muscles, denser bones, and a stronger heart. And building hardware is slow, it is messy, and it is exhausting. Think about renovating a house. While you're painting the wall software, it's easy, it looks fresh quickly. But when you start knocking down walls to build a new room, hardware, it's a disaster. There is dust everywhere, it's noisy. The house looks worse before it looks better. Right now, your body is a construction zone. You feel tired and heavy because your body is diverting all its energy to building new tissue. It is stealing energy from your run to build your legs. You aren't getting slower, you are just under construction. The feeling of heavy legs isn't a sign that you are failing. It is a sign that the renovation has started. The Timeline of Hope Now I know this sounds depressing. Nobody wants to live in a construction zone. But here's the good news. This phase doesn't last forever. Biologically, it usually takes about 14 to 21 days for the new hardware to install. That's it, two or three weeks. If you can survive just these next few runs without quitting, you will wake up one morning, step out the door, and that heavy feeling will be gone. The renovation will be finished. You just have to outlast the dust. Part three, the trap of chasing the high. The problem is most people don't wait for the renovation to finish. Your brain remembers how easy it was two weeks ago. 
you have this expectation. I should be faster today than I was yesterday. So when you feel slow, you panic. You try to force it. You run faster. You push through the pain to find that easy feeling again. Please listen to me. Do not do this. You cannot force a plant to grow by pulling on its leaves. You will just kill the plant. If you push hard during this construction phase, you add stress to a system that is already stressed. This is how beginners get shin splints. This is how they burn out. This is why people say, I tried running, but I got hurt. If you are fighting for every step right now, stop fighting. Slow down. Let the builders do their work. Part 4. The Solution. The Rule of Thirds. So, how do we survive these 21 days without losing our minds? You need to change your definition of a good run. Here is the shocking truth. If every run feels good, you are not training. You are just exercising. There's a difference. Elite athletes know that feeling terrible is actually a requirement for getting faster. To handle this, they use the rule of thirds. When you are in a training block, your runs should fall into three categories. One third will feel great. You feel like a superhero. The magic days. One third will feel okay. You get it done. It's boring, nothing special, but you finish. One third will feel terrible. You feel slow, heavy, your legs hurt, and you want to stop every five minutes. Here is the secret. If you feel terrible sometimes, you are doing it right. The terrible runs are not failures. They are the days your body is doing the heavy lifting of construction. Those are the days that count the most. So if you wake up tomorrow and have a bad run, don't get angry, don't get sad. Just say, okay, this is one of my bad 33%. I accept it. Don't quit, just slow down and finish. A slow run is infinitely better than no run. Part five, take a vacation, the deload. Finally, I have one practical tip that works like magic if you are deep in the hole. If every run has felt hard for the last 10 days, your body is telling you something. It is saying, I have too many construction workers and not enough bricks. You need a deload week. For the next seven days, I want you to make a deal with me. I want you to run less. Run 30% less distance than usual. Run slower. Leave your watch at home. Give your body a vacation to finish the renovation. You see, you don't get fit while you run. You get fit while you rest. The run breaks you down. The rest builds you up. I promise you, if you back off for just one week, you will come back and that spring in your step will be there again. Conclusion, you are not a tourist anymore. If running has suddenly become hard, I want to congratulate you. Seriously, it means the free trial is over. You are no longer a tourist just visiting the sport. You are now a subscriber. You are doing the real work. The easy days will come back, but this time they will come back because you built the strong muscles and bones to support them, not because of a neurological trick, don't let the construction dust scare you away. You are 21 days away from a breakthrough. Keep showing up. The Invitation I know this phase is scary. It's hard to know if you are just tired or if you are actually injured. Most beginners guess, and they guess wrong. That is why I created my membership channel. It's not just for elite athletes. It's for people like you who want a plan that tells them, hey, this week we rest, this week we push. We take the guesswork out of the renovation. If you want to build a body that can run forever without breaking down, send me a message. Let's get you through the wall. Your running journey powered by science.